To add hot cues or memory cues to your track, you need to make sure that you are in the export mode so we have the same screens. If you are in the performance mode, you can select the export mode on the left top corner of the screen over here. I'm in the export now. Make sure that you have selected the panel Q loop and not grid over here. So Q loop. Now let's navigate to a part in the track that we want to set a memory cue on, for example, over here. Now I click on the cue and I make sure that the cue over here, so the letter Q is selected, so blue. And I click on Q because that sets a cue point. This cue point isn't stored to memory, so let's click on memory to store it to memory. Now you see it says over here zero beats. Because what happens when you set a cue point, when you go back into the track, you see that it counts down when I click on play, it counts down to that cue point. When I store the cue point to memory, you can see that it adds the time over here in the right top corner of the screen. I can give this memory cue a name. So I click next to the time and I say, for example, break. Because that enables me to see over here when I'm playing the track, okay, now the break is coming up and it takes me one beat or eight beats or 16 beats. Now let's do the same thing over here in the track. I play the track, I stop it and I click on Q. It isn't stored to memory, so I click on memory and now you'll see over here it says one minute and 32 seconds. And I click next to that and I say drop. Recordbox counts down to the next cue point, but also your CDJs and XDJs count down to that cue point. You can store on top of my head, I believe 10 cue points. To remove a cue point, I can click on the X next to that cue point. And now you'll see it's gone. I will set it again just for the sake of this example. I click on memory because you can also remove it from here. Delete memory queue and you can see it's gone. I set it again because I can also call the previous memory loop, uh, the, the previous memory queue with the left arrow and you can see that the track jumps to that part of the song. And I can go to the next memory queue and it jumps back to this part of the song. You can do something really nice with memory cues because you can also store a loop in memory. Meaning that if you play the track on, for example, the performance mode or on a CJ, for example, that that loop is automatically activated. You can do this, for example, in the outro of a song. So the last part of the song, the last eight beats, for example, gets repeated. So you are able to mix out the track into another track. So then you know for sure that the track will never end until you have finished your mix. To do that, I click here on four and there may be another digit over here. I click on that. And now you'll see it activates a four beat loop. I can shorten this loop by clicking on the left here and then it makes it a two beat loop, a one beat loop, a half beat loop, a quarter beat loop. And I can lengthen the loop by clicking to the right. But this is still not stored in memory. It is just a loop that I've set for this moment. So I click on memory again and now you'll see it adds the time, but it also has a loop icon over here. I can also give this loop a name, loopy. Now this loop is activated. I can deactivate it by clicking on this number again. And when I go back into the song and starts playing, nothing happens. Why is that? Because I need to activate that explicitly. And how can I activate that? Let's stop the track for a minute. I can activate that by clicking on this loop icon. Then this loop icon becomes red. And I know they've chosen a really stupid color because orange and red are really close and it's really hard to see, is it red or is it orange? Because when I go back now, 
and I play, the loop is automatically activated. But if that doesn't happen, which could be the case, then you need to go to this menu over here, click on that menu and enable active loop playback and it needs to be set to on because if it's set to off, it will just ignore this active loop. And if you want to remove it, you do it the same way as you did with memory cues. I can click on this X over here. Now I've set an automatic loop of four beats, but you don't necessarily have to do that. You can also set a manual loop. And there is where this button comes in because now I can set it to manual. And when I play the track, I can now set a manual loop by clicking on in and clicking on out. And you can cancel or exit the loop by clicking on exit. If you want to activate the same loop again, you click on reloop. Okay, now the confusing parts because you have memory cues, but you have also hot cues. Hot cues are cues that are hot. In other words, they are to be activated immediately. It immediately jumps in a song. Because let me show you what happens when I play the song and I go back to the previous memory point. Go back and it stops the track. And the same, by the way, when I go to the previous one and I go to the next memory queue, it stops the track. And this is where hot cues come in because with hot cues, you are able to jump in the song while the track is playing. What this allows me to do is, for example, go from the first break, jump to not the first drop, jump to the second drop, because then I can make the song, for example, shorter. Over here are shown the hot cues. Those are numbered from A to H. You can see there is already a hot cue set with a green label, hot cue A. When you analyze the tracks in Recordbox, you can say to Recordbox, I want to analyze the track and set automatically a hot cue at the beginning of the track. And that is what happened here. Let's click on this and you can see it automatically jumps back to the first part of the song. That A is also shown in the zoomed in wa waveform over here. And that A is also shown on the overview, track overview on the top of the waveform. Now let's go to the last part of the song and set a hot cue over here. So I cue the track and I click on B. And now I can play the song and I click on A and it jumps to the beginning of the song. And I can click on B and it jumps to the B part of the song. The hot cues, by the way, are shown in this list over here. When you click on hot cues, you can see that the, hot, the first hot cue is set over here and here is the second hot cue. I can also give this hot cue a name, but I can't click here because then it will jump in the song. What I need to do for that is I need to right click on this hot cue and click on add comments and I say last drop and I click on enter and it is here. Just like with uh, cue points, you can click on the X to remove the cue point in this song. Let's set the hot cue B again, cue it B, but I can also click here on this X icon over here and then it removes the hot cue also. I can also choose another color. I can right mouse click on this hot cue and choose the color blue, for example. And you can see that the B has become, now it's purple. Uh, and you can see that the B has become purple. The hot cues and cue points are automatically available in the performance mode in Recordbox. But if you want to use the hot cues and cue points, you need to export your library, those tracks that you have in your library again to your USB drive in order to update the settings of those tracks on your USB drive. Even if the tracks are already on your USB drive. Regretfully, Pioneer has some problems lately. I'll talk about that in this video over here. Subscribe to my free DJ Tips newsletter. As a thank you, I will throw in a free ebook with information on how to get a foot in the door, equipment, and the necessary skills to learn. The link is in the description.